We pull into a Target parking lot at around 8 o'clock at night. It's already dark outside and not many cars are left. We sit in silence for around 20 minutes, waiting. Another car pulls up. When it does, I grab my stuff, hop out of the car, and say, Bye, Dad. See you on Sunday night. This was my weekly routine for many years, going to my mom's house on the weekends and staying with my dad for the weekdays. This sort of situation isn't uncommon for the array of young adults who, whose parents have separated, and it's become more common and more accepted over time. Although personally, I never thought it was that weird. My parents were never married, but for the first portion of my life, they were together, although they definitely weren't happy about it. I can remember spending many of my evenings listening to the sounds of their arguing over things that I thought were incredibly unimportant at the time. Finally, after what felt like forever, they split up when I was around six. For the next eight years or so, I would continue to switch between my mother's and father's houses periodically, and it seemed to have no effect on me, although I seldom made plans with my friends on the weekends because of it. As I got older, I found myself growing jealous of my friends who had normal families. You know, typical ones, with two parents still living together. I began to contemplate what my life would be like if my parents hadn't split up, if they loved each other like other kids' parents did. I wondered if I would gain anything, or if I would feel more loved. As I got older, I found myself leaning towards the parent I was with the most, which turned out to be my dad, and I thought that having to go to my mom's house on the weekends was sort of problematic. This feeling continued as I started having to go to Monterey every weekend, a six hour or so round trip for my mom to visit her boyfriend of the time. When she eventually moved out of the state to be with him, I was devastated. Even though I had been harboring that resentment, she was still my mother, and it felt like I wasn't enough of a reason for her to stay in California. A few months after this, I realized that my mother was not the best influence on me. She had taken money from me on numerous occasions, contradictory to my father's teachings that you don't take things from the ones you love. She had tried to get me to lie, me to, lie to my dad many times when she left me alone in her apartment all weekend, promising to buy me whatever I wanted if I didn't tell him. And when we had plans with other people, we would show up a half an hour or an hour late with no consideration to the other people involved. These experiences built ideas in my head, ideas of what not to become. I continued to lean towards my father, realizing that my mother was not the best person and how I didn't want to be anything like her. When she eventually got in trouble with the law, that was when I decided to cut my ties with her completely. She had made it evident that I wasn't as important to her as she was to me. Regardless of my mother's problems, my father has always been incredibly supportive of anything I do, whether it's academics, sports, or the doodles on the sides of my notes. My grandmother, another role model in my life, is the exact same way. She, along with my father, set the standard of what I wanted to become, a complete 180 from my mother. They always came to every single one of my basketball games, they were proud of me when I did well in school, and they just overall treated me like I was important. They set the standard of what I wanted to become. I wanted to be sweet and kind like my grandmother, who works her hardest every day to make sure I'm as happy as I could possibly be. I wanted to be like my dad, who's an incredibly hard worker at everything he does and never gives up on what he wants. I wanted to be a better person because of them. When I was a kid, I didn't think that my parents separating would be the end of the world. I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal. I now realize that their separation undoubtedly did have an effect on me. I know that it's the stark difference in their personalities, their life choices, and their attitudes towards family that gave me the vision of who I want to be today. I've learned growing up that the definition of family isn't just the people that are related to you by blood. It's the people who care about you, who love you, and who support you unconditionally that make up a family. And that's what I'm really happy to say that I have today.